Okay, so we are printing two calibration parts on the large vat, uh, on the large build plate on the V2 vat. Uh, six parts is a bit challenging. Uh, six parts on the build plate is too challenging. It kind of it always fails. So it doesn't really it won't really draw out the differences between the V1 and V2 vats. Um, so I'm gonna try and I initially thought of doing two on the small build plate, but to be honest, not that many people have the small build plate. Um, so I wanted to go back and use the large build plate for this purpose. Calibration part I'm printing here is a modification of the one I originally posted to the forum. It is somewhat difficult to really eyeball a layer warping with the slitted part. So I've gone back to a square profile for the solid block portion. I also got some tips from Kudo3D they indicated that differences in speed and uh, layer quality and force se and uh, separation forces mainly impact small prints at high resolution, um, and large prints are not really that much affected. Um, the, the difference is not that great for large prints. So we will see the differences. We'll have to spot for several different types of differences here, um, both in terms of the macro level warping, which I think the implication is it's not really going to affect for large parts. Um, but there may be surface improvements in the small parts. And so I'll print a set of these uh, right now at 93 microns. Uh, one here and one on the one with the v1 vat and then I'll shrink these down probably by half and then go down to um, maybe go down to like uh, 50 40 
microns and print again with a smaller version of the part as a comparison to see what the differences are both at large sizes and at smaller sizes. Okay, so here are the first results from some of my side-by-side -side comparisons with the V1 to V2 VAT. This is the output that I just printed from the V1 VAT. The V1 VAT, uh, the print failed. What ended up happening was both, I've got two calibration parts, and both parts pulled off of the supports. Um, so the separation forces in this case were enough to pretty much break the whole print. Both parts failed. When we take a look at my print with the V2 VAT, the V2 VAT had one failed part and the other one uh, succeeded. So, I mean, you wouldn't call, necessarily call this a success, a success because if I had like a large part or whatever, it wouldn't affect it. Uh, it still would have failed. Um, but there is, was some critical amount of difference between the two vats that caused, um, that resulted in at least one of these guys uh, printing successfully. Uh, you can ignore kind of the difference in this uh, white layer on top. What happened was I didn't rinse it enough before I put it under UV, and so something weird happened to the uh, to the uh, to the finish. So it's a good sign. I mean, the answer is that the separation forces, I guess, are a little bit less, and in some cases uh, will be at the critical level between success and failure. Although for large parts, I wouldn't bet on you being able to uh, substantially, or rather, I don't think you would be able to change, I don't think this affects the printability of difficult to print parts by a substantial amount. Um, I may have hit you know, a, a delicate threshold here, one success, one failure, because I happen to have an array of two parts. But if this had been one part, um, this may have failed less badly than this guy here, but it still probably would not have, wouldn't have worked. Um, so it's a good first start. Um, we'll see here that uh, the calibration part printed quite square. So the interesting thing is that if we look at the sides, there is definitely some separation force here. There's some uh, warpage at the lower layers of the solid part. Um, but overall, the squareness of this part is quite good. The detail came out quite good. This was at 93 microns. Um, and I can see the the M3 threads on the side came out well. The uh, the one millimeter pillars came out well. So the next trial is going to have to be uh, trying something at higher resolution, since the, as I said earlier, they said that uh, Kudo 3D told me that you know they they actually didn't see that much of a difference in larger parts. And not that this is 30 millimeter part necessarily is gigantic, um, but they said that you know surface detail improvements are really on smaller parts. And I can understand that now because if I were printing a much bigger part, um, you know, the improvement wouldn't have been enough to to have saved it. It's just that I guess, you know, between these two prints, uh, I'm just at a critical threshold where I can actually, where that little difference made the difference between one part coming out right and zero parts coming out right. One other thing I did want to mention in an unrelated note uh, has to do with uh, pigments. I am using fairly pigmented Fun2 resin um, in this kind of dark red. It's got red and black in it. And you'll see on this failed part, right, one side is shiny. And the shiny side is, of course, the side that stuck to the vat. And the other side was the side that faced up. And if you look at the surface 
finish on the top side, right, there really isn't that much over cure. This part actually, um, even though it got over exposed over and over again, has fairly good surface finish on both sides, even the side that kind of detached off from the supports. Um, I mean, not that if it had been successful, you would have been able to get the supports off this cleanly. But this is just gives you an idea of kind of what's possible as far as the um, kind of underside surface finish when you have sufficiently pigmented resin. I mean, I even messed this up a little, right? This is, this is an extreme case because this is a failed print. And so I probably repeatedly exposed this final section over and over and over again. Um, and the, the pigmentation managed to resist that fairly well. If this had been, you know, a correct print, um, like this guy here, then I would expect that it actually wouldn't be that blobby. Um, we can actually give this a shot. I can remove the remove the uh, the supports now. And you might have to use your imagination because I because removing the supports this way is going to leave some of the supports obviously behind. And then right now I'm ignoring all the flying bits, which I'm going to have to clean up later. Oh, well, I'm really going to have to clean this up later. It's getting all over the place. But I do want to do this in one shot, just for you guys. And, um... And so what you can see on the successful print also is that while, right, first there's some, there is some uh, warping, of course, because of the, of the forces, right? We know that the profile at the bottom, uh, maybe half millimeter or so, um, are a bit, are a bit warped, but we can see that the surface finish around the not including the support pillars um, is is fairly decent um, fairly even matte or uh, or satin finish in all of these areas here so so yeah, obviously not perfect. You'd still need to sand it down, um, but it's not horribly blobby um, when there is sufficient pigmentation.